Some people that don't like cilantro, they think it tastes like soap. And then I'm gonna put it in here. Beef jerky, good. All right, that's good. <laughs> Let's talk about beef jerky. Cause today I am gonna try to make beef jerky and let it be known that I've never made beef jerky in my entire life. I have no clue, but here we are once again, against all grain, Danielle Walker's cookbook. She has a recipe for beef jerky and I'm gonna try to do it today. And for the first time, I'm gonna do it with you. It's so crazy because Dylan, our second born man cub, he, you know, is struggling with his ulcerative colitis. And so we are trying to make all these good foods for him, gluten-free, grain-free, dairy-free, sugar-free. It's no fun, honestly. Uh, however, it's important and it helps. We've seen it help. We practice functional medicine here, which means food heals along with some other natural supplements that he's taking, some good probiotics and a bunch of other things. He's seeing a professional. I'm not the one guiding him through this. Anyway, I'm gonna try to make this beef jerky. I'm really nervous about it and I'm here to do it with you. So if there's a mistake, there's a mistake. We'll see. I bought flank steak at Trader Joe's yesterday and it's in the freezer. It says to put it in the freezer one to two hours so it makes it easy to cut and then I'm gonna make the marinade with you. But it, uh, back to the beef jerky. Dylan was craving it, so he's like, I've been craving beef jerky, mom, but all the beef jerkies that I see have so much preservatives and a lot of sugar, and I can't have that, but I really would love some beef jerky because the, the way that he has to eat right now is a lot of protein and vegetables, one ingredient items mostly, things you can pronounce. Come with me today as we make some beef jerky. When I woke up this morning, I looked at all the ingredients we'll need. We're gonna need chili powder. We're gonna need cumin, is that how you say it? Pepper, some fresh cilantro, coconut aminos, three garlic cloves, some lime juice, some orange juice, paprika, some cayenne, some apple cider vinegar. I was missing the oregano. I think I can go without that. So let us get started with the marinade. The first ingredient is the cilantro, but I just wanna tell you that this cutting board is super special to me because our firstborn made it in high school in Woodshop. I will never get rid of it. It's, it's my favorite cutting board I own. And also, I'm not a professional cook. I know, I'm in my 50s, I should have this down by now, but I really don't know the proper way like like how do you take the in my mind i take these off but in in this recipe it calls for a fourth cup of chopped cilantro and i i don't want the hard bits in there so i'm just gonna take all these little leaves off and then i'm gonna chop them up to about the size of a fourth of a cup and that will be the first step i took a whole lot of them off the um the stems and I'm hoping this will equal a fourth cup. This is a fourth cup. It's not a fourth cup, isn't very big. Now I know cilantro is one of those tricky ingredients because I've heard either people love it or they hate it. There's usually not an in-between on how you like cilantro. I've also heard that some people that don't like cilantro, they think it tastes like soap. So that's interesting. I'm so glad it tastes like cilantro to me and not like soap, because I love it. We all love it. Oh, look at that. That's, that's, that's more than enough. I'm gonna try to pack it all in. The next ingredient would be three cloves of garlic. Now, I just wanted to show you these cool things. I have a garlic press, got it from Pampered Chef, and a Martha Stewart little Another way to cut your garlic. You could dice it like a chef, I suppose, but I'm gonna use one of those two things. And this little cool thing gets the skin off. You just roll it like this. And look at that, it comes out perfectly beautiful and the skin comes off. I love this little, 
this little invention. Now, do you want to see the two different ways I can use to cut the garlic? There's this way. And you can put a clove in there, shut it, and you just go back and forth, back and forth. It's got little wheels. And it shaves up the garlic for you. It's pretty nifty. That's a Martha Stewart little thing. Or you can do it this way. And this way, quite honestly, I didn't have to take the skin off. If you use this, you can leave the skin on. And then there's this way. Or I suppose there's this way. You could just cut it up, right? Um, so there's all different ways. You don't need all the fancy tools. I just usually don't like the way garlic smells on my fingers. But, and I like showing you how to cook like this because not all of us know how to cook and not all of us are professionals. So this is to show you that literally anyone can do this cooking. You just have to try and it doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be professional looking. Just just give it a go. Now we're at the wet ingredient part, which will include the apple cider vinegar with the mother, keep the mother in there. And then you have the um, coconut aminos and you're gonna have fresh orange juice and fresh lime juice. And I wanted to show you on the orange and lime, there's different ways you can juice. You can use one of these or you can use this beautiful thing and we'll do both so you can see. I'd like to try to save the skin for a garland, but we'll see how that goes. So let's juice. Cut the orange in half. I have to smell it. Oh, it smells so good. I love the smell of oranges, citrus in general. So we're gonna do a little, we'll do this kind of which creates a little bit more pulp, obviously. But I'm just gonna do this. So there's some orange juice. And here's the other way. And I don't know the proper way if you put it in this way, but I always put it in this way. Thank you, Alexa, please turn off. That was my, Alexa, turn off timer. That's my timer to take the meat out of the freezer. We need two tablespoons of orange juice. So you need two of these. I'm gonna put all my liquid ingredients. I'm using my left hand, that is really crazy. I'm gonna put all of my ingredients in this jar, the wet ingredients, while I'm measuring. So there's your two tablespoons of orange juice. There's also two tablespoons of the coconut aminos and this is sort of like a soy sauce without soy now we're going to juice our lime and you know what i just like to do it the old-fashioned way let's hope there's two tablespoons here it doesn't look like as much obviously it's a smaller little piece of fruit Two tablespoons of that. Oh look, there's just enough. And lastly is the two tablespoons of the apple cider vinegar. One, two. That's, that's what you call cooking in the Wild West. You never know what's gonna happen. So there's your liquid ingredients. And now we need all the dry seasonings next. Let's go there. flank steak in here for two hours. Take it out and we're gonna cut it up. Look at that, oh gosh, 1724. No wonder beef jer jerky is expensive, wow. Now I'm supposed to cut these 
in little strips. And you're supposed to trim the fat because that is not good to keep on there or it'll spoil after drying. Slice against the grain, yeah. So I'm gonna go this way. I'm not gonna go with the grain. I'm gonna go against the grain and let's see how this goes. Oh, so far that's nice. Maybe it's gonna be thick jerky. I'm trying my best to go thin. Oh, that's too thin. Okay, that's ridiculous. There it is. I'm not sure how to cut off all the ex excess, you know, fat, as they say, because it's so thin. But I guess, like on that piece, you could just kind of cut this little, that little bit off. So I'm going to trim some of the little extra pieces of fat off, like, like she said to do. And what I'll do is I'll just go an hour, and then I'll set the timer, and then I'll come back and flip it and I'll do that. It says to marinate, you could either marinate it for four hours or you can marinate it overnight. And as you see, I have different thicknesses going on here, but this is my first time. It's super intimidating and I'm so curious if this is actually even going to turn out. I cut a lot of the fat away, but there, the very end obviously had a lot of fat on it, but I'm just gonna marinate it anyway because I just say, we'll eat these fatty pieces first so they don't spoil. And now it's time to add the marinade. And it I wish you could smell it because it smells really good and I'm hoping it covers it all. It doesn't really, I'm gonna use my hands. <laughs> I'm gonna use my hands, probably also not professional, but they're clean. And just kind of make sure that it all gets coated and we're gonna let this soak for four hours and every hour on the hour, I will kind of flip it around. I started marinating this this morning. It is now 3.30 in the afternoon. So I'm gonna pat it off. I'm gonna put it on this tray. We have it set at 170. That's as low as my oven will go. And this will probably be in there for another four to five hours to make the beef jerky. <laughs> laid out on the rack I, I, it's kind of thickly sliced so it's gonna be thick bake of bacon it's gonna be thick beef jerky I'm gonna put it in here and she says to kind of prop your oven open with a wooden spoon so I don't know the properties but I'm gonna do what she says and I will set my timer for four hours and then give it a check oh boy that's gonna be like a Geez, almost eight o'clock tonight. Wow, it's a process. It is the next day after the big jerky making. This was full of jerky last night. I didn't record last night because it was so late. It had to dehydrate like five hours. I ended up throwing it in the dehydrator or the air fryer, air fryer for another hour to just because then Motorcycle Man scared me about bacteria and E. coli and stuff, and then I don't want to kill the family. So. <laughs> I put it in there to help make sure. I don't know. Anyway, Dylan took a bunch of it. And I'm just here to report that if I were to grade this, it's definitely jerky. Mm, jerky right here. You know, but it's not like teriyaki sweet or anything. It's just like dried out meat. <laughs> so I would give this, if I was to rate it for the cookbook, Danielle Walker. A six. All right, Dylan. Dylan came home from work and he loved the jerky. So he said, if he buys more meat, can you make more jerky? So I would say I have to increase the number scale to a, well, just at least say what number. No? Beef jerky? Good. Uh, that's good.